Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining SBC Leaders Podcast. I'm Kelly Keane, Global Relationships Director at SBC. SBC Leaders is a membership of preeminent operators and operator associations formed to provide a forum for their leadership teams in order to share ideas, promote innovation in the sector, collaborate on major issues, and work to enhance the industry's reputation. Our next guest on the podcast is Lennon Castillo, who is the online COO for La Grande Entertainment, one of Mexico's largest casino brands and a member company of SBC Leaders. Lennon has been with the company since 2014, serving first as its online CMO and now oversees online operations. Lennon is responsible for the launch of Strendis, the company's first online brand, and considered one of the most complete online casinos in the market due to its large portfolio of products. He thinks differently. He understands the Mexican market inside and out, and he's poised to lead one of the biggest land-based brands into the online sector. It is therefore my pleasure to welcome Lennon Castillo to the show. Welcome, Lennon. Hi, Kelly. Thank you very much for inviting me and being part of this. Most welcome. Um, I start most of these chats talking about the pandemic, so this will be no different. Um, obviously, right. the pandemic and the lack of sports has affected the sports betting industry overall, and of course, in Latin America. As um, competitions are, start, are restarting in Mexico and in the region, what are your expectations for growth? Um, and, and tell us about some of the initiatives that that's, you're leading on. Sure. Thank you. Well, uh, our growth expectations are to increase the number of users we have on Strendus throughout the year. Uh, it certainly helps that sports competitions or events are reviving or coming back because our betting volumes are returning to the usual flow. Nevertheless, the pandemic helped us out because we were not only handling the sports betting vertical, we were also focusing on different verticals that are uh, like casino and slots. And because of the pandemic and the lack of events, it was kind of a boost for that type of services. So it was important for us to be ready and have the portfolio required by the Mexican gamblers in this case. The pandemic must have sped things up a bit though for you to get the casino live, the online. Oh, yeah, <laughs> especially since the pandemic also affected the land-based side. I mean, we were closed for almost nine months, so uh, it, it was a challenge, uh, but it was also like uh, an opportunity because we have, we know quite well our customers and we were able to uh, contact all the land-based uh, players that we already have and offer them an extension of their experience through the online gaming so it, the pandemic, it was, of course, a challenge as a company, but also a big opportunity for the online, uh, not only the betting side on sports, but also the casino and the slot side of the business. Great. Um, aside from uh, football or soccer in Mexico, what is, what is the most popular sport uh, in the different markets in, in, in the region? In this case, there's a lot of influence from the American sports. So uh, we'll find that basketball, football, I mean, American football and baseball are uh, two, number two, three and four in, in the list. Soccer is also as uh, worldwide the number one. But uh, in this case, these three type of uh, sports because of the influence and proximity with the U.S. are really, really important. The fact that uh, during the pandemic, they were cl closing down, there were no events from that type of, uh, of uh, sports uh, affected us. But nowadays, uh, the, the impact is not as big because they're recovering. I mean, they're already open. We have uh, a lot of, uh, let's say, events regarding uh, American football, baseball, basketball, even hockey. And that's switching what, what's happening at the beginning. So uh, we seek to complete uh, entertainment through sports betting because uh, including, I mean, this type of uh, sports basically from the U.S. Oh, great. Um, is there are there areas uh, within the sports betting industry that have not been properly covered and maybe there are some gaps that LeGrand is, is filling? Uh, probably the local or regional sports, for example, uh, it's not the same to have uh, uh, not the first soccer division, but may probably the second one or the National Basketball uh, Association from Mexico. 
I mean, those sports are not uh, as important worldwide as, as they are for us, probably. And there's where our trading mm. uh, services and the, how we handling it, it's important so that we can uh, work with the market and give them what they're expecting besides all the worldwide uh, sports and events that already we know exist. Mm. Um, for example, today go. we are uh, sponsors for the Mexican National Professional Basketball League uh, and uh, one of their teams, which is a champion, by the way, for Forza Regia. And uh, that's the type of uh, things that we're trying to do. I mean, to support the local uh, sport events the local leagues and make sure that uh, they are one of the uh, main services that we have besides, as I mentioned, other international leagues. Great. Um, we've been seeing a lot of you lately, and I think that is um, due in part to the Latin America, the Latin American market just exploding onto the globe in terms of, of a yeah. high growth market. Um, do you are you competing with with other international sort of operators out there how, and like how how do you do so yeah and it's growing just as you mentioned it's uh it's challenging why because we have local uh competitors along with the big players worldwide and they are getting to the market that it's uh on its way to be regulated so that that is one of the big steps that we're making and uh, it's difficult from a competitive point of view since the offering keeps on growing. So it's important for us to find our niche or the way that we're gonna differentiate ourselves. And, and that's one of the main uh, purposes of our business plan. How do we differentiate with uh, other competitors that are well known worldwide and they have a lot of experience and big, uh, I mean, there's a lot of money around that. So what we, uh, we also strive to constantly innovate with our products and our service. And that's going to be our main goal to be differentiated by service, personalized service, to get to know exactly what our customers needs. We are in, we know the market. We've been here for almost 16 years. I mean, Logger Entertainment Group has been here for almost 16 and we're well known and we are close to the customers. So that's one of mm -hmm. the uh, differentiators that we're going to be betting on. Uh, along with being able to contact and be to be in contact with the customer uh, personally and, and not uh, as it usually um, is understood. For example, nowadays with uh, all the technology, you're able to know when your birthday is and they send you a message uh, and apparently it's kind of getting closer to you because they know that you were born, uh, I mean, that day. <laughs> Uh, the fact that, I mean, that engine can do that is not what we're mentioning. I mean, we want to be really, really close. So we have a, a total service, personalized service. We're able to have people talking to you. If you're willing to have uh, a conversation or you have yeah. doubts, we're open to be there for you. And that's one of the differentiators that we're betting on. Wow. Um, is that for, for online and for land base as well? Uh, yeah, both. Of course, the online side of the business is moving forward faster than the land base. Yeah. So it's like uh, our reference. We start there and then we migrate or include it into our land base side. Okay. Yeah, because at the end of the day, we see our customers as one. Yeah. Even though we have the land base and the online the business, I mean, we see them as complementary. They're not competing. What right. we're saying to the customer is that we're the same and you're going to be able to extend or expand your uh, experience. If, it, if you're on the online side, you can go to our casinos and enjoy yourself and find the same type of games and the other way around. Right. So speaking of online, um, you personally recently oversaw the launch of Strendis, Logron's first online brand, as we've mentioned. Um, I'm curious, just from a personal uh, perspective, what was it like to launch a completely new rev revenue stream for a business the size of Legrand? Uh Yeah, it, it was really interesting and challenging, but uh, I mean, we're really, really glad we did it. Uh, as I mentioned, Logrand has been here for almost 16 years and uh, it's, it's a family owned business. Uh, we operate like, uh, I mean, uh, totally professionally and we have been evolving 
And uh, when we decided that we had to, in, to start this type of uh, business, the online site, we decided to do it through uh, a strategic planning. So it's not usual, but we spent, for example, the first year only analyzing the market, planning and determining the steps to follow. We established a five, 10 and 10 year plan where we uh, ran around 120 RFPs, analyzing all the platform content suppliers, service suppliers, and uh, determining how we were going to build our business. And that the strategic move was really, really important because not only the board, but the CEO were behind it. And we were uh, patient enough to establish that type of plan and be able to also uh, structure uh, a team, uh, uh, a robust team that nowadays is allowing us to get to those goals that we established. So it was really interesting. Uh, it's um, when you like business development in a market like this, that it's kind of new for us, not only for the company, but for the country uh, with technology related, with entertainment around it, with challenges around regulation and competition. I mean, it's 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 an inter interesting mix. But once you are in it, I mean, it's like uh, it's like a drug. I mean, yeah. you end up liking it. And I mean, it's difficult to, to live it. Sure. Were there, I mean, it sounds like you guys did a lot of planning uh, and strategy thinking. Were there any yeah. surprises along the way? Always, always. <laughs> I mean, uh, at the end of the day, you, you have an idea. And what yeah. you do is once you start walking the road, you find that there are things that were not uh, considered. But that's one of the main uh, Things that I would like also to, uh, I, I don't know, uh, express, uh, to be agile, mm. to be able to understand what's happening in the market and react. Or sometimes with that planning, if you're able to uh, see it in advance, move really, really fast. So, the, yeah, changes all the time. It's an industry yeah. that is changing all the time, especially with the regulations uh, evolving. So, uh uh, yeah, but but uh, we're confident that we're going to be able to uh, meet our goals as we have till today. Good. That's great to hear. Besides all of that, which is a massive, undertank, a massive undertaking, um, can you tell me uh, a moment or two that sort of has led you here that has defined your career? Sure. Um, Maybe it's not one or two things. It's, it's the journey itself. Uh, for example, um, I have been able to work in different industries, uh, industries that seem to have nothing in common with each other. For example, such as building or roof coatings, banking, clothing, retail. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, nowadays, casinos, games and entertainment, you no know, gambling. So uh, they're really, really different. So, uh, I believe that that has uh, marked me because um, even though you might think that businesses have things in common, there are also particular or specific requirements of or ways of doing business depending on the industry you are in. Being able to participate in different industries probably has made me um, work or see different uh, uh, to think up, uh, out of the box, to be able to do benchmarks or to analyze the problems or the plans that we're developing from different points of view uh, that probably in the industry you're in are not necessarily considered. And uh, innovate is part of it. Uh, you take ideas from other industries that are working mm -hmm. and you say, is there something equivalent that I could do for this industry that I was doing on the other one? Mm. It was working over there. What can I do over here? Uh, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, uh, for, uh, if you see retail, you see, for example, all the aisles and the products, how they are handled and how they try to sell it to the, to the end user. Uh, we say, hey, if we take that idea and apply it to the platform, 
how do we offer the product to the customer in order for them to see different type of aisles, different type of products, to all, always uh, show them the most important, but also have the others that are probably not as relevant, but they're going to be there. Or when you're going to be paying, you, you go and pay out. I mean, when you're paying, you see that there is some type of products that they are offering. Like yeah. uh, you were not thinking about buying some gum or chips and yeah. suddenly just because you are there, you buy them. So we say, take those ideas and apply them to this business. How, how do we do it? So uh, I believe that those are the things that have kind of uh, marked me in a way. Yeah. Wow, that's really interesting. I We rarely hear that kind of outside perspective um, in gaming. So that's great. Um I asked you about surprises when you were la launching Strendus, but you know, wh what surprised you the most about this current role? You've obviously outlined loads of industries you've worked in. Clearly gaming is the most fun with the nicest people, but yeah. um, <laughs> um, what's like, what surprised you about being in this role or ha have you run into any surprises? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, I mean, I'm glad I'm here, to be honest. I'm mm. really, really happy. And one of the big surprises is uh, that you're able to combine things that apparently are are opposite. For example, uh, you have entertainment, you have innovation, you have gaming, but also you have statistics. Uh, I mean, you have a lot of analysis behind that. So that mix of being... Uh, uh, I don't know, to handle math, to handle numbers, to handle charts, but also to be able to see it from a different perspective and thinking about entertaining and entertainment and, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, innovation. That mix is really, really interesting and difficult to find somewhere else. And one thing uh, also that it's attractive or, or that was kind of uh, surprising is that because of the stage we're in, you're allowed to innovate and put in practice what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in other industries, they're so mature that it's so difficult to innovate yeah. or to establish new things. In this case, it is the other way around. It's like, hey, what new are you going to do tomorrow? I, I mean, it, that's something really, really interesting and surprising once you're in. Yeah, great. Um, so there are people listening um who are looking you know l listen and watch to learn more about leadership in our space so what advice would you give others looking to be leaders in this industry uh one of the things that we have learned is that you have to get to know your market and your customers mm -hmm. that that's so important and uh, and align it to the strategy that you have it is not that you're going to end up just doing things for doing things. I mean, you have to align that to the strategy that you have established, but get to know your customers. Once you do that, uh, you're going to be able to establish projects, plans or uh, activities uh, that are going to add up not only mm. to the business, but with the relationship that you're planning to have with your customers. If you see them just as a number, uh, well, that doesn't mean that you, I'm not saying you're not going to grow, but it's not the same. Mm. Uh, so to be really, really close to that is one of the main things that I would say I sh we should work on. And is that sort of sort of pervasive throughout the low ground entertainment uh, culture? Does everyone believe that? Does everyone work for that? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's part of the DNA. Uh, since the beginning, one of the main things that have... Uh, identify the company is uh, how close we are to the customers to really end up understanding what they are doing, what they're looking for and, uh, and working consequence. I mean, if you are requesting something and we understand that it's important for you and if we're going to be able to do it, let's do it. So yeah, it's part of the DNA of the company. And that's one of the main things also. It's not just an idea that we have, it's really established along the whole structure of the company. Wow, great. So, uh, what can we expect to see next from you and Legrand? Uh, what what can we expect in the future? Uh, to reinforce precisely that uh, relationship with our customers. For example, recently we participated. Uh, uh, there's an institute in Mexico called IMT, which is a Teleservice Mexican Institute, 
They've been here for almost, I believe, 20 years. And they are uh, an institution that uh, analyzes and includes members uh, nationwide that have either teleservices or customer service. And uh, they have also a yearly, um, let's say like, um, it's like not a contest, but they include around 120 different companies and they have different categories and there are prizes around the strategies that you establish. And uh, we happily, I'm happy to say that this year we won uh, the prize on the best customer service strategy. And wow. we were competing against uh, banking companies like American Express or BBVA wow. or uh, I don't know, um, insurance companies uh, yeah. well-known worldwide. Uh, I mean, even Coca-Cola was there, uh, of course, with a Mexican uh, entity, but we were able yeah. to com not only to compete, but to win the first prize. Uh, and that assured us that uh, the strategy that we've been establishing to being close to the customer and the strategy of uh, contacting them and being per have a personalized service is, is, is not only important, but it's working. So we're going to keep on working on that. That's something we're going to be doing. Uh, we have another uh, strategy related, which is, we call uh, Estrendus Universe, which is like a loyalty strategy, not only a program. And we're, we launched that uh, during the last queue of 2020. And during this year, we have to make sure that it's uh, well understood in the market and that the customers are applying to it. Uh, we'll let you know about, about it. I mean, it's one of the biggest strategies. It's like gamification, but also uh, giving them benefits around their interaction with, uh, with, with us. And uh, finally, uh, we want to have presence not only in Mexico, but start looking into LATAM for 2021. Great. Um, well, that's all very exciting. And I think we'll all be anxiously waiting to see sort of, you know, how that customer strategy plays out for you guys online. Um, thanks. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, my sincerest thanks to you, Lennon, for joining and for giving us the opportunity to learn more about you your take on leadership and and really about this this new online brand that we should be watching. Thank you so much. Thank you, not only you, but also the viewers and hope that everybody's healthy and doing fine at home. Exactly. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. This has been the fifth episode of SBC Leaders Podcast. I'm Kelly King, Global Relationship Director for SBC. You can subscribe to the series on Spotify, Apple, uh, Google Podcasts or watch direct on gamblingtv.com. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.